Hi there, and welcome to the Kingdom Sexuality Podcast. We're Paris and Alana, friends who have a heart for intimacy and long to uncover God's truth and design for sexual freedom within marriage. Welcome here. Hello, everybody. So today we have a really exciting episode because we have our first guest. So today we have Paris featuring Neil. Wow. Yes, my husband has graciously <laughs> accepted the honor of being our first ever guest. <laughs> well, to be honest, it's not much of an arm twist to get me to do something with you. No, babe. this has been. Let's just be real about that. We've right actually talked about this like before Alana and I ever started. We're like, hey, we would do this together, right? And he's like, oh, yeah. It's like perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. So, well, to start it off, we're just gonna. I have um, six questions that actually Jeff and I mm-hmm. picked through together. So it's kind of like a couple's thing. But um, so tonight we're just gonna ask Paris and Neil a bunch of questions that they have never seen before. Yeah. So they have no idea what they have Jeff and I plan to ask them. Yeah. <laughs> totally a hot seat. No idea. This is a hot seat. We're totally impromptu, you guys. Yeah, you sent them. You sent Paris the questions, but she she didn't look at them. I didn't look at them, just specifically. So it's totally impromptu totally on the impromptu. spot. Love it. Okay, so I guess we'll just start with number one and yes. see what happens. Okay. Okay. So, what did you guys find most attractive about each other when you first met, versus what do you find most attractive about each other now? I love this question. Do you want to take your first babe or do you want me to? Um, well, I've kind of always just loved everything about you. So, I mean, <laughs> some things just don't really change, to be honest. But uh, mm-hmm. when when I first started paying attention to Paris, it was, honestly, it was kind of when she hit puberty. So, she actually started looking a beautiful young lady. Hey, we need <laughs> With, a backstory. Wait, wait. Okay, we need backstory. A backstory. Here we you go. guys? For those of you who didn't grow up knowing me, I was a hardcore tomboy, meaning I literally wore boys clothes and a belt and a Leatherman (laughs) and work boots everywhere I went. Like I was my daddy's girl. So I was not a physically appealing looking child (laughs) quite a while. (laughs) Needless to say that all changed and she's got this spitfire personality, which is something that I've always loved and I still do. So to say what has changed mm-hmm. or what what did I first fall in love with and what do I, you know, how's that changed now after seven years of marriage? I would say I don't think it has changed personally. I think it's always mm-hmm. been there and it's probably always going to be there. <laughs> seven years of marriage, mm-hmm. what, 14, 13, how many years? 13 years of yes, thirteen years. best friends, inseparable, mm-hmm. whichever way you want to spin it. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's a good answer. <laughs> All right, I'm the bar high, you're babe. approved it. <laughs> yes. Approved by Paris. Okay. Oh, good. For me, I I always just thought Neil was so hot. <laughs> <laughs> I was totally an appearance person once I started paying attention to obviously my own appearances. Hit puberty, everything changes. Like, oh my gosh, I'm a woman. I should probably act like one. I should probably look like one. And then, of course, like guys coming in the picture, I was not looking, but Neil was. <laughs> and I was just like, when he started really paying attention to me, I was just like, oh my gosh, Neil is so hot. Like, I could do this. <laughs> totally a backstory to that, too. Like, <laughs> when I was young, I was fat. Oh, he I was, was like just, really fat. He was <laughs> pleasantly plump. He was so cute. <laughs> he had so many freckles. No, no, no. I was, I was, I was more than pleasantly plump. Okay. I was I was fat, and then <laughs> <laughs> it, it was seriously. It was like as soon as I started paying attention to Paris. Actually, before that, I think it was the year before that mm. I started working out. I oh, took a yeah. fitness class in school, and I got absolutely jacked. Yeah, he was so <laughs> ripped, and he was just the dreamiest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so that's really kind of where that came into play, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So I was totally, as you can see, superficial, and all basing everything on looks initially and 
as of course we grew together closer in our relationship and our friendship. And then it turned into like, I was 14. I told my mom, I was like, I'm marrying that Simpson boy, you know, one day. And I, I fell in love with his heart. And, mm. you know, then that was a big deal. And I seen so many things in him. Like he was just such a selfless lover and he was always there to help anybody in need. And it was just always others first. And so that really started to culminate, you know, through our dating years and being engaged. And now, you know, seven years later into marriage, I'm, I'm going to say I'm, I'm stuck with that still, you know, I'm, I'm just stuck on how beautiful his heart is and how selfless he is. And that's just a conviction every single day looking at me. I'm like, Oh, to have a heart like that, man. <laughs> That's good. You're welcome. Am I still super That's so hot? cute. Oh yeah, dude. That has changed. She's still super hot. I'm not saying that's changed. My uh, my appreciation for deeper things has changed. <laughs> there you go. So that kind of helps me segue actually uh, into question number two. So this one's kind of just directed to Neil, I'm afraid. Um, so Neil. So Paris shared that at age 14 that she knew that you were going to be her husband one day. So when did you know that Paris was the one? I never did pay attention to someone without that intention. Mm. And so mm -hmm. that was, you know, when I was 15, she was 13. That was from the get go. That was kind of the intention behind it. Um, mm -hmm. That moment where it was like, yes, now I know for sure was, I, I don't know if I have a defining moment like that because my heart was always, steered in that direction so, right and does that answer your question <laughs> you've just kind of always known you've always known she's going to be the one i remember him telling me probably you know when i was 14 a year after really cultivating a friendship together and he just told me that like you know i'm a one woman man and when he said that to me that just really gave me a whole new appreciation of his intentions and what he was going into this with. I mean, we were kids and he knew that. And I was just like, whoa. <laughs> so yeah. good. Two, two parties involved, right? You know, Paris and myself. And to really say I knew this was happening at this particular time, I, I don't have that exact moment. Mm -hmm. So it's... But that's your intention. That was right? that was you always my never... intentions right from the get go. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, that's awesome. All right. So number three, what is one of the best pieces of advice that you guys have received as a couple? Ooh, that's gonna take Honest, some. Honestly, oh, we yeah. haven't. Uh... <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. We were so young, and yeah. we were both the first to be married within our friend groups, within our families, mm -hmm. within everything that we mm -hmm. kind of pioneered the way per se. And so there wasn't, I didn't personally, I didn't feel like there was a whole bunch of advice given to us at all. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I feel like we kind of figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> we figured it out. I don't know. But <laughs> well, no, no but, but like there wasn't like, there was people like sitting us down and saying like, you need to, you know, make sure that you keep your open communications. You yeah. need to, yeah. you know, communication's key. Like, you know, there were, there were, nobody ever did talk to that. us about sex at all. Yeah. So I feel like right. we got a lot of don'ts. Don't do this. Don't do that. There was. Which isn't were, advice. No, it's not advice. So I think that's really the answer mm -hmm. to our question. Um, it was a very overwhelming theme within our dating and engaged, engaged years that we didn't have a lot of people coming in and giving us advice. It was a lot of, don't do this, don't do that. And I think that kind mm. of reflects, you know, on our hearts, Alana, um, in this podcast. Yes. You know, we, we've talked about purity. Right. We've talked about um, community and support networks and how important that is for us as wives to share to others and to younger women. Um, because I didn't, we didn't have that very much you know and i mean my parents were really awesome to talk to but i think we were also super conscious of talking to my parents just because of the fact that they're my parents 
you know, I was like, yes. oh, I don't want to tell them that we just made out and I feel sick about it. Like we shouldn't have done that. What are they going to do? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, totally. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So let's go. Number four, how has having children impacted your sex life? You know what? Maybe we should. What's your answer, actually? You go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I can say confidently for myself that it's increased intimacy like tenfold. You know, mm. after having Acadia and I went through, we went through a traumatic birth with her and she's our firstborn. And so, you know, we had to wait quite a while to be intimate again. And I remember, you know, all those weeks waiting, we had a lot of conversations and we found other ways to be intimate and ways because we're, you know, forced into this situation per se that we've never experienced before. And that was yeah. so precious to me. I remember going through that thinking how special this was that, you know, we're now in this situation where we're literally having to make a conscious choice to move forward in intimacy, you know, not just, okay, you know, we've got all the free time. We, we've got leisure, like whatever we can do, whatever. It's so easy to take, you know, the sex for granted before you have kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. And so mm -hmm. after we had babies, I would say that was the true turning point for our intimacy because now we were consciously, you know, preparing for it. We were consciously making date nights happen. We were consciously uh, working towards, you know, being able to have a really special night together, working towards, of course, sex around babies. <laughs> yeah. What's your take on that, babe? Yeah, I, I totally agree there. Uh, I think another thing is like we've had some struggles with sex and with mm -hmm. intimacy as well. Mm -hmm. And with children, you know, it was just the the timing of how everything worked, like us overcoming these obstacles and whatnot and yeah. timing with children and stuff like that. So there's like, I feel like there's a whole bunch of factors involved uh, to make that a very loaded question. <laughs> yeah. <that's true. laughs> oh, no. It's true. Right. Too. So. Uh, but yeah, totally. Like, you know, what Paris shared there it was definitely, you know, once you have babies, it's not just, you know, kick your boots off at the door and go to town, right? It's, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot more yeah. involved there in terms of planning. And, you know, all of a sudden you're trying to get there and the baby starts crying. Well, yeah. Yeah. you know, there's responsibilities there as well, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I remember working through frustrations of the transition too. I'm not going to ignore that. <laughs> that was a reality and you know when when we would have a special night together we had something planned and then you know what babies just happen a rough night babies teething babies you know just upset Who unsettled yeah. right and I remember having to work through that frustration and then also you know taking this a step further um understanding that this is our calling as parents you know is to live selflessly and then not putting those frustrations, you know, onto your baby because <laughs> they don't know. Yeah. They just need you, right? And yes. so that was a big thing we had to work through too is like, okay, we need to just kind of regroup here and get back in basics. We have a whole whack of new responsibilities right now. We need to give ourselves a lot of grace as well. And within mm -hmm. that too, like with children, like, you know, if you are heading down that road towards sex and you get disturbed by, you know, feeding the baby, changing mm -hmm. the baby, whatever the case may be, um, you really grow as a couple being able to go deal with that situation, remove yourself from there, come back to your husband or your wife, mm -hmm. and then continue on where you're at because that's in and of itself is a, a much deeper intimacy. Oh, a hundred percent. And that's something that we've really grown in as well. Yeah. So it's uh, yeah. Loaded questions. I like them. <laughs> that is a good question. <laughs> Write it down yeah, it's funny. on them when we interview them. Oh my gosh. Right. Cause at first I was going to be like, I was like, Jeff, what do you think? Like, how has children impacted your relationship? He's like, no, no, no. Ask him about their sex. Like, how has it impacted their sex life? <laughs> like, right? It's Love it. Valid. That's uh -huh. good. Absolutely. Very much so. Okay, here we go. Um, number five. This one I was just really curious. Um, are you guys? Oh, sorry, <laughs> sounds weird, but um, I'm are you guys? Right now. <laughs> Are you guys happy with the amount of affection that you show to each other outside of your house? Like PDA, hand-holding, snuggling, et cetera. 
we're a super physical <laughs> couple, super physical, always have been, always will be. That's Neil's love language. And I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure it's like twice as hardcore as everybody else who is physical. <laughs> let's just say people let's just say people have told me that i'm too affectionate to my wife in public we get told that (laughs) often you guys so not like being grungy or like dirty or anything it's just i think (laughs) we just are very open and free with how we love each other and you know we're hugging each other and we're kissing each other and you know we're holding hands or like you know, I'm walking beside Neil and I have my hand in his back pocket, you know, on his butt. And people are like, whoa, whoa. Too far, too far. <laughs> so we are, <laughs> <He's>... <laughs> you guys can't see what he's doing. That's fine. Um... <laughs> <laughs> no, I forgot. So, audio so, so I would say I'm really blessed and happy with, with how affectionate we are and how we've honestly protected that and worked towards I don't want to say maintain because we work towards always growing it and, you know, cultivating it. Yeah. <laughs> like, nailed yeah. it. On. Nailed it. I mean, she said it all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so good. Okay. So this last one, um, this was kind of, it just, if you're willing to share, um, cause Jeff was really curious when we had recorded the one episode. Do you know my wife? <laughs> right well no (laughs) this is just this one was it was more because okay so in that one episode Mm -hmm. um spicing it up you guys were saying that you guys have a secret like love code Mm -hmm. when you're out and about Mm -hmm. so we were wondering what is it if you guys want to (laughs) share right so that's why i was like if you don't want to share because then you have to change it up oh no we're good with oh, this. they to- they can totally know what's going down tonight. <laughs> they don't need to what know are any we supposed details. to be hiding? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So Neil and I totally have a thing with just tickling at each other's hands. Okay. So this is our love language, our like little love code. And you know, well, because this is awesome, like when you're driving or we're traveling together or whatever, and we'll just start like tickling each other's hands and like just slowly playing with each other's fingers. And that's totally our thing. So we can do that wherever and whenever, and nobody has a single idea what's going on up until now. And (laughs) right. And you know, for us, we've made that an intimate expression towards one another. Mm -hmm. And we just always thought that was the funnest thing. I don't even remember when we like really came up, like consciously we're like, Hey, when we do this, it was was (laughs) never, it was never a conscious thing. It's like, Hey, when we do this, it's just something that we've always done. Yeah. Yeah, and so you know, it, it could be something that you started way back when you were dating. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, you can't, you know, you not making out all the time, but you can tickle each other's hands. Then you associate that with feeling good, with feeling close. Yes, mm-hmm. you know, whatever it is, you know, if it's, uh, you know, tickling the back of your neck or your spouse's neck, or you know, running your fingers through her hair, whatever the case may be, it doesn't mm-hmm. matter. Yeah. it's you mm-hmm. know, for us, it's just something that we've always had, and we've unconsciously or subconsciously associated it with the feelings of closeness feelings of intimacy intimacy Mm -hmm. and that's carried over into our sex life now yeah into our marriage so that's you know again whatever it is that makes you feel close to your spouse yeah go for it so good that totally goes back to our question on like physical affection outside of marriage Mm -hmm. that's (laughs) that's part of this like that's how it started Without a defining moment, like hey, let's do this. Yeah, and without know, a defining like, it's moment. Just, it's always it's been it's always been that way, and it's mm-hmm. just carried over. Yeah. Into our. No, it's marriage. good. Yeah, and I think it's fun though, like because we didn't consciously do this. I think it's fun, you know, for those of us listening right now, to go ahead and have your like secret love code with your spouse, because like sitting down and actually talking about it would be so fun. We'll have <laughs> to make a second one now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's so good. Okay, so I thought of one last question to ask you guys. So okay. when do you guys feel closest to each other? Definitely after we make love. But I think with saying that, I want to elaborate on it. Because going back to kind of what we talked about, you know, working around babies, it became a whole day affair right. once we had kiddos. And before that, it wasn't mm-hmm. so much so. So, you know, when... Like Neil and I, we can just feel it. You know, when when you haven't been 
intimate for a few days and you just feel a disconnect and we just know that. And so I think, you know, after seven years of marriage, it's really beautiful that you've, you know, you cultivate kind of like this vibe, if you will, between the two of you. And you just know that things are off and you just start working towards that together, you know, in preparation for reconnecting the next time you have the opportunity to. So I think, I think that kind of nails it. Do you have anything to add to that? No, I think, I think you nailed it there. Yeah, definitely after, Mm -hmm. after we're intimate, but again, it's, you know, it's not the physical act of sex that's connecting. Mm -hmm. It's sex Mm -hmm. as a whole, Yeah. you know, the the mental, the emotional, the, the physical, the complete vulnerability. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's what's so connecting. That's what makes you feel so close. Yeah. You know, any, any one of those is great in and of itself, but you know, when it comes to actually being intimate and making love, you're encompassing it all. Mm -hmm. And so that's where that, that really deep connection comes in. So good. Good. (laughs) This is fantastic. I got my notes. Right. (laughs) With all the questions you knew beforehand. No. Yeah. Yeah. The one that you just came up with, I got notes on. (laughs) (laughs) No. Well, thanks so much, guys, for being good sports with my questions. It was hard to come up with them. That's all, that's <laughs> all you got, eh? It is. I can come up with more if you'd like. Where's the, where's the timer? <laughs> we don't have a timer. No. We're, just, we're just going for it. Yeah. But I feel like it'd be fun to have, like, if our listeners would be interested to, like, shoot us questions to do more of yeah. these. I feel like that would be really fun. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That would be fun. very fun. Because kind of like what we were saying, you know, the advice thing, one of the questions you asked us and like, you know, did you have people speaking over you? Did you have people coming alongside you? Like, was that a thing? Um, And we are cultivating that here in kingdom sexuality, right? So if you Mm -hmm. guys have questions, Alana and Jeff and Neil and I want to be here to be a sounding board or to be, you know, someone you can ask prayer for or ask the questions about and get input on, like, that's our hearts in this. Yes. Yeah, no question's a bad question either, right? If it's yeah. if you're thinking it, someone else is probably thinking it too. That's a good point. Hey friends, thank you so much for hanging out with us as we dive deeper into meaningful, godly intimacy, tackle the hard questions, and embrace truth while we're at it. We're also on Instagram at Kingdom Sexuality. You'll find our Instagram handle below in the show notes, where you'll also see any other resource links we may have mentioned in today's episode. As always, Our hearts are to cultivate deep community and freedom with you guys. And we cannot wait to continue this journey alongside you. We'll see you in the next episode.